Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we have a, uh, <laughs> a fun little task ahead of us. We are going to uh, prune, shape up, thin out these three Natchez crepe myrtles that are in the big flower bed in front of our house. These crepe myrtles have been here for, uh, gosh, okay, we've been in the house 18 years. Let's just say somewhere around 15 years. Um, and they are big and they are beautiful. They are coming back into bloom. They are a gorgeous white flowering uh, crepe myrtle. Natchez's are white, uh, but the Japanese beetles got hold of all the blooms and ate them all off. And so they are trying now to come back and flush out their next set of blooms, which they would have been if the beetles hadn't got them. But what we need to talk about, and I wanna show you so these three crepe myrtles are huge, right? And they're big and they're beautiful and they're doing really what I want them to do. But there is a thing with crepe myrtles is that we want to keep them more limbed up like this one. So it has a nice upright uh, canopy on it. You can see this one down here on the end. It is a little bit more downturned and providing a little bit more shade for this bed than what I want. And so we're gonna come in here, we're gonna thin out the canopy because I read one time where with a crepe myrtle, you want to prune it so that a bird can fly through the top. And you can see that this one is not that bad, right? There, this is, I, my opinion is going to be the easiest one to do. Um, but as we progress down, you can see how it gets thicker and thicker. So I want to thin that out. Um, because it is getting a little bit too much shade, I have the Summerific Hibiscus in here. And they've been in here for many years and have done great. But as the crepe myrtles have grown, especially these ones here on this side, they have gotten less and less sun. And you can see this one right here is just absolutely pathetic. I mean, it is just, I mean, there's like maybe what, five stalks on that thing. Um, and I know it's because it's not getting enough sun because when you come down right here, that's cranberry crush and it is nice and full um, especially on the front side where you can see that it's getting the afternoon sun. On this side, it is not as big because it's not getting as much sun. So we want to raise up this canopy, thin it out so that these plants will get some more sun. Now I am fully aware that these um, trees, obviously as they get bigger, they are going to prov provide more shade and I'm totally fine with that. I've got some hydrangeas in here. I'm already thinking about how can I turn this into like a part shade bed. So that's my train of thought. Crepe myrtles um, do provide this beautiful canopy. They are deciduous. So in the winter time, they're going to be um, not going to have any foliage on them. Again, that doesn't bother me whatsoever at all. Um, and you can tell that some of them have trunks that have that three to five. That's the optimal, you know, number three to five. Um, this one you can see has a lot more than that. But crepe myrtles are great too because they have such fun bark. So you can pull the bark off and this is that time of year where it's starting to peel um, and it just provides a whole different layer and texture to the tree because it's got that peeling bark. Um, so what we're going to do is I have got my ladder. I've got my trusty furry companion right here <laughs> that's going to keep me entertained. The ladder, then I brought the flatbed trailer, so I'm going to put the limbs on that. Um, once everything is done, we're going to start with this first one. So let's go up here and let me show you and kind of like my thought process on what I am going to do. Now, I am not going to take out any of the main trunks. I am not gonna go that far on this. However, when I have branches that are coming out um, that are more thin, say like these guys right here, I'm gonna take those out. And I'm gonna try to see how much of my ladder I can get out in those thin limbs. I'm gonna saw 
and just really leave these nice big huge limbs um, obviously I cannot get up that far into the tree and that's okay I mean at some point you just have to say it is what it is but um, yep so that's what we're gonna do Jer's here with me so he's gonna be some of assistance and helping me film and uh, the great thing about this is that it yes it is the middle of the afternoon but hey we're in the shade, so it's okay. This is, I've been wanting to do this since this, probably last, last fall. And I told myself, okay, I'm gonna do it in the winter time before it flushes out. But now it really is nice to do it now because I can see how much sun shade I actually get by taking out these limbs. I don't think you could probably ever prune a crepe myrtle at the wrong time. Um, these things are really like indestructible. Is it the optimal time? Probably not. Um, so that, that this is not a tutorial on the optimal time to prune your crepe myrtle. But again, I have time, I'm here, the weather's cooperating, I'm doing it. All right, so I'm gonna get everything set up and then we'll show you really what we're gonna do. Okay, so we have gotten the first crepe myrtle um, thinned out. <laughs> After I sawed about the first two limbs, Jerry was like, uh, hun, don't you need the pole saw? Time to pull out the big guns, people. Uh, so that's what we did. Now, are there more limbs that we could take out? I am sure, but I'm of the, the school of thought of, you can always take out more, you can't put it back. So you can see that we have thinned it out now here those limbs are all gone lets that light in here this is be the morning sun from this direction and then back on this side is the afternoon sun coming in so for this first crepe myrtle i feel i feel pretty good about it um again if you wanted to go up further and take little guys out you certainly could but i think overall that's a really nice open habit on this crepe myrtle and then what we're going to do is just do more of the same for the next two these to me are a lot more congested and um, thick inside and it's not really big limbs that need to come out it's a bunch of little thin limbs um, to just really open up that canopy allow some more sunlight in and a little bit more air circulation in those guys so we will be working on that but yeah here we go we're just gonna get out all the power tools and the hand saws and the clippers and we're just gonna go for it Right, my friends it is done and wow what a difference it makes especially looking at it from this perspective like you can you can see through uh, again the first one was not as bad but it was the second and third one that really just Jerry got a hold of that pole saw man and he was having some fun cleaning it up but look at that like you can actually see through now and that hibiscus look at it 
the red one, that cranberry crush, it is getting full sun all around. Um, so this definitely opened up lots of room, lots of canopy, lots more sunlight is coming in. And could we have taken out some more little guys? Yeah, I'm sure we could have, but um, that certainly is a really good start to what we, um, <laughs> to what it did look like. And the plants are gonna be so much happier because these are full sun to part sun plants and they were definitely not getting um, some of those, the hours that they needed. So the takeaway as far as crepe myrtles and how to prune your crepe myrtles, because this is very important in my humble Southern garden uh, gardener opinion is that when you're pruning your crepe myrtle, um, you really are going for that fantastic aesthetic look. You want your crepe myrtle to look like a tree, narrow at the bottom, full canopy at the top. There's a thing that happens here in the South, North Carolina, I don't know, I think it's the whole South. Um, I can just speak from our experiences here. It's called, we call it, it's nicknamed crepe murder. And it is where folks who honestly just, they just don't know any better. And they take their crepe myrtle and they give it a flat top. So every like late winter, early spring, they come in and just cut it straight across and it just looks awful. And so that um, only produces weak stems. You want really nice, strong, thick stems that will just grow and be happy and produce lots of foliage and lots of flowers for you. So as your crepe myrtle grows, if you have, like if you're starting out with a small one, like when we did with ours, you're going to every year, once a year, go out there and you're gonna have to make decisions of who goes and who stays. Typically, crepe myrtles will have three to five main trunks at the bottom. It's not a hard, fast rule. There are crepe myrtles that have been trained to have a single stem. Obviously, some of ours have more. That's not that big of a deal. And I think they say three to five because it's that odd number, right? Aesthetically, it looks good. And then as it grows, you limit up. You take those limbs that are hanging low and you bring up your canopy so that you can have this gorgeous top and these beautiful um, trunks that show all of that great, um, how the bark is peeling. It's beautiful. You want to showcase that, so you need to limb them up. So it doesn't matter if your crepe myrtle is a Natchez and can get 20 to 30 feet tall, or if it's a shorter variety that only gets 12 feet tall. Just limb it up, clean it up, make it neat and tidy. If you get suckers around the bottom, um, you want to prune those off. As soon as you see them, just take them off and eventually that, eventually it should stop happening, but you don't want suckers around the base of your tree. Just get those cleaned up. So the main takeaway from today, don't commit, commit crepe murder. Don't do the flat top, no, no, no. And then nice vase-like skinny at the bottom, nice and full up top. Once a year, go in there, limb it up, clean it up, take out the weak stems, leave the strong sturdy stems. As always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.